Invite a budget blind style consultant to show you how to transform your rooms just by changing your window coverings. Canada's number one choice for window coverings. Visit budgetblinds.ca today. This is New Cap News with Annika Notvait. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A GoFundMe page has been set up for a Prince Albert man who appears to be the victim of Thursday's helicopter crash along the North Saskatchewan River. The page has been set up for Dean Gervais. It says he left behind a two-year-old daughter, a loving partner and a baby due to be born in December. The fund was over $25,000 with the money going towards a trust fund for Gervais' young children. A 55-year-old man from BC, the pilot, also died in the crash. Transport Canada says the helicopter struck a power line before crashing onto an island near Painton. A man from St. Paul has been found dead just hours after he was reported missing early yesterday morning. RCMP sent out a release asking for the public's help to locate 47-year-old Darren Christensen after he hadn't been seen for three days. RCMP found Christensen's body in his truck after a St. Paul resident tipped them off at its location. An investigation by an Edmonton medical examiner is underway and at this point foul play is not suspected. Well, residents in the border city have had their voices heard as the city releases the results of their dollars and cents campaign. However, participation wasn't quite what they had hoped for. And the Lloydminster SPCA will continue to receive any animals that are picked up by bylaw officers. City Council reporter Jeremy Thompson has more from City Hall. The goal of the dollars and cents budget engagement was to get as much public input on how the city should spend its money as possible. However, as it turns out, only about 2 to 3 percent of eligible households filled out the survey. A Councillor Lenny Goodhand says that's a problem. I don't want my frustration to suggest that the information isn't valuable. I just really wish we had more people participating because then we could really make hay with this stuff. And the city agreed to pay $50,000 to the Lloydminster SPCA as part of the Pound Keepers Agreement. That's the same amount they paid last year. However, there is concern there may be more impounded animals this year as a result of the new domestic animal bylaw. The uh, animal bylaw, we now cats involved, so there, you know, there could be a su substantially more, uh, maybe not, but it could be substantially more uh, coming in from our bylaw officers to the SPCAs. We'll be following these stories and more in the coming week. Reporting from City Hall, Jeremy Thompson, Newcap News. Well, it's been a long time coming. The new Friendship Centre in Cold Lake is finally open. The process of replacing the building began in 2011. And as Hannah Tita explains, the new facility will make a world of a difference for those who work there. Lake residents celebrated the grand opening of the new Friendship Centre last week. The centre is a non-profit organization which provides various programs such as job training and free income taxes for First Nations people in the community. This new building is just so awesome. The kids deserve this classroom. And they were in a trailer before and it was getting pretty dilapidated in there. The original Friendship Centre opened its doors 27 years ago, operating out of a house. Several additions were made over the years as the centre outgrew the space, but the new building was in desperate need. The one area had no basement, the other area had a basement that um, was just old and had water, water damage. And a lot of the building materials used were contaminated as far as asbestos and everything. Local businesses and organizations came together in support of the new centre, donating well over $400,000. The city also pitched in an additional $50,000 to the project. It's just going to be fantastic for Agnes's and her, and her group. The Colic Friendship Centre has been an organization that's been around forever and uh, they just provide a, a community-based service uh, for Aboriginal people but also for anybody that wants to come in and, uh, and, and need service. The much improved building will allow the Friendship Centre to host gatherings on a much larger scale as well as accommodate the growing services they provide in the community. Hannah Tita, Newcap News. Well, it seems fitting that Yvonne Clouroux's last year running his infamous Halloween house has met with the most success since he started the tradition 10 years ago. Now he's back on track, raising the most money as well. I hope that we can oversee the one year. I, I have raised $2,000 in, in the one year, so hopefully maybe we can get the work. From candy and cash donations to the zombie walk over the weekend, Clue says the community has done a great job of going above and beyond for him this year and can only suspect as to why. 
people have been supporting me and they're doing a great job. I think in my last year, I, they're, they're standing up for my last year, I think. Clearu has received more than 1,000 visitors at his home so far and says every day at least 30 people come to take a look. I, I walk them through the yard, I show them all the new displays and there's more to be expected but we're just going to have to wait for that. With five more days until Halloween, Clearu is looking forward to seeing how much money was raised for the EMS and of course excited to show off his yard for a final time to come, what he expects will be thousands of visitors.